this one and locked up before and after and I'm doing a video on the latest uh, on um, Alice Murray Johnson the one that was uh, that President Trump and Kim Kardashian and people like that anyway President Trump granted her clemency um, anyway President Trump commuted the life sentence of Alice Marie Johnson who had been in federal prison for more than 20 years for a first time drug conviction. Um, Johnson was released hours later. Johnson was, okay, Trump granted Johnson clemency after reality TV star Kim Kardashian West lobbied for her release during a visit to the White House. In a tweet Wednesday, Kardashian West wrote best news ever with a link to an article about the commu commu commutation. This is the latest celebrity backed out of clemency from Trump who has embraced his constitutional authority to pardon and shorten prison Sentences, sentences for people convicted of federal crimes. I think that should be not just f federal. I think it should be for anybody with a nonviolent charge. They get, I mean, anyway, we heard about the Centoya Brown case. They was trying to get clemency for her, but I'm not sure how that's going to go on that. Anyway, Johnson's supporters argued she should not have to spend the rest of her life in prison for a non-violent drug offense. They say she was a model prisoner during her incarceration. Oh, by the way, um, I want to show you a clip and I'm going to do like, kind of like a um, reaction video type thing showing her getting released and then I got something very important to say after this, after the video. I mean, the clip I want to show you. There's something very important to say. Anyway, Johnson was convicted of cocaine conspiracy and money laundering charges at the time of sentencing. The Associated Press reported that U.S. Federal Judge Julia Gibbons said Johnson was the consensual interpreter um, I can't ever say that word. Entrepreneur of a drug ring that dealt in tons of cocaine. The White House said in a statement that Johnson had ex accepted responsibility for her past behavior. While this administration will always be very tough on crime, it believes that those who have paid their debt to society and worked hard to better themselves while in prison deserve a second chance. The White House said. Brittany Barnett, a member of Johnson's legal team, said Johnson learned of her commutation on a call with Kardashian and her lawyers. Kardashian del delivered the news. Johnson told her legal team and Kardashian that she feels like she has been resurrected from the dead. Barnett said, prior to Johnson's, Johnson's Trump issued five pardons and one commutation. All of these cases have involved public figures or have been the subject of national media attention. Trump has also provided to be respect, respective to, to appeals from celebrities. Wonder why only celebrities? Anyway, he granted a rare po posthumous posthumous Pardon if I said that wrong, correct me. He granted a rare posthumous pardon for legendary boxer Jack Johnson in response to a request from actress Sylvester Stallone. Trump is moving more quickly to exercise his pardon power that than um, recent presidents. His last three Predecessor, why do they gotta use these big words all the time? 
predecessors, whatever. Anyway, and the White House had not issued any pardons or commutations at this point in their pre presidencies. Unlike other presidential actions, which require legislation, legislative support or can be challenged legally, the president, president's power to pardon is almost unchecked. There is a Justice Department review process, but presidents are not bound to follow it, and Trump has not adhered to, depart to department guidelines in many of these cases. Trump sa says he is also weighing clemency for Martha Stewart and former Illinois Gov Governor Rod Blagovich. Blag I know that word. I've seen, I've seen that dude's name before. Rod Blag, Blagojevich. I can't say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Trump is facing a special counsel investigation into his campaign's possible ties to Russian, Russian meddling in the 2016 election, which he calls a witch hunt. There has been special speculation that Trump may be trying to send a signal with these pardons what let's see trying to send a signal with these pardons that he would be willing to act in the cases of those who might be indicted because of the probe okay he even raised the possibility of pardoning himself in a recent tweet saying he has the absolute right to do so, but he has not done anything wrong. Huh. Asked Wednesday whether the president has the power to pardon himself. House Speaker Paul Ryan said he, he didn't know the legal specifics, but added he shouldn't and no one is above the law. Legal experts are divided on whether a president can pardon himself. Okay. I'm going to show y'all this clip. Y'all watch this clip. And it's really so awesome because you can see her coming out and saying hi to her family. Hugging them and saying, oh my gosh. And this one was locked up for, what, 22 years or something like that? It's awesome. So, here it comes. Just a quick update, I could not do a, a reaction video, so this is the real video. No interruptions and no slight lagging, so please enjoy, and like I said, I have something to say after this, so please stay tuned. It's very important. Thank you. Hope you enjoy. Good evening. Tonight, a mother and daughter are reunited on this broadcast, and you'll see it here first. The circumstances, safe to say, are unique. Alice Marie Johnson, you see her here rushing into the arms of relatives, was released after 21 years in prison. She was sentenced to life for a first-time nonviolent federal drug conviction, and you'll hear from her momentarily. Today, in the sixth act of executive clemency of his administration, President Trump commuted her sentence. It came after Kim Kardashian West lobbied the president on her behalf, and as in many of the pardons and commutations the president has issued or is contemplating, it is part of a larger debate, only some of which has to do with the merits of Ms. Johnson's case, her sentencing, or the very real joy that she and her family are obviously now feeling. So in a moment, we'll talk more about that, about how this president is exercising his power to grant pardons and commute sentences. But first, my conversation a short time ago with Alice Marie Johnson on the phone and her daughter, Tritessa. Alice, how, how do you feel? You just got out a short time ago. Oh, my goodness. I feel, I'm so happy, but it's so overwhelming to me to be able to just hug my family. Alice, when did you first learn, and how did you learn um, that you were going to get out? My uh, case manager, Mr. Holler, called me back to uh, the unit team. I knew I had an attorney call, but when I... When the attorneys came on, I heard Kim Kardashian's West voice, and Kim told, gave me the news. And I started screaming. I, it was just too much. Did you know that she was going to go to the White House and, and plead your case? Yes, I knew that she, she was going on my birthday. 
Tressa, I mean, this just must be one of the most incredible days for you. I wonder, did you ever think after 21 years you'd, you'd see your mom released from prison? Well, I always had hope that she'd be released, but uh, I didn't know when I woke up this morning that today was today, for sure. <laughs> Alice, does it feel strange to, to be out? Yes, I have not been in a car without handcuffs in almost 22 years. And, and have you had a chance to talk to each other? To Tressa? Yes. Yes, I spoke with her sh uh, shortly uh, with the attorneys. Well, I don't know if you, if you, if you, Tressa, if you want to use this opportunity, if there's anything you want to say to your mom. Hi, Mom. I'm so glad to see you out. I'm looking at the video of you <laughs> running out. Uh, I wish I could have been there. There with I, me. I always there. imagined myself as being there, so, but I'm, I'm so glad to see, whether I'm there or not, I'm so glad to see that you got out today. Oh, I'm so, I'm so happy. I'm excited I'm, to see you. I tell you, that was, a, that was the best sight I believe I've ever seen in my life, was to see my family out here today. I felt like I was flying, not running. And Alice, you said, uh, you were saying uh, that, that your daughter, though she wasn't there, she was there in spirit? Yes. I saw her in the faces of my other relatives. She was right there with me in my heart. What, do you um, know what you're going to do now, Alice? I mean, it, it's, uh, I know you, you were, everybody says you were a, a model prisoner, that you worked uh, incredibly hard to, to help others. What, what do you want to do now? Well, I want to, in terms of work, I already have a job secured, but I really want to work hard with, this, uh, with changing things in our criminal justice system. And you probably already know I love to write. So I don't know what kind of theater is taking place. I'd love to get that started up there. Did you lose hope at some point that, that this day might not come? Well, honestly, there were some times that I felt like losing hope. Well, one of the times was when I walked up to the, when I walked up with another person that received clemency, and I thought my name was on the list. And, that was a pretty rough day for me, but after that, my daughter, my daughter, Katina, always tells me that I remind her of a phoenix. So that day, I tell you the truth, Anderson, I burned all the way out. Mm. And I, I guess in order to be a phoenix, I had to rise from those ashes. So since then, I've been going strong. That was the worst day. Well, you sure have risen today. Um, is there anything you want to say to the president, to, to Kim Kardashian West, and all the others who have been uh, fighting for you? Well, I, I, I want to say to President Trump, I am going to make you proud that you gave me the second chance in life, and I will not disappoint the American public or the world who has so much faith in me. All I can say is thank you, President Trump. And, and I love you, President Trump. Thank you. And I want to tell Kim, my war angel, that you never gave up on me. You never gave up your fight. You were relentless. And it has paid off beautifully for me and my family on this day. Tratessa, what do you want people to know about your mom? She's a, a kind person and a generous person. And um, I'm, I'm thankful that people will get to know her outside of being in prison. So, and we'll get to, to be able to reconnect with her. But um, that she's, I want people to know that she's genuine. What you see is what you get. This isn't an act. Well, Tratessa, uh, Alice, I'm, I'm so happy for, for both of you. And Alice, I just wish you the best and uh, can't wait to see uh, what you do moving forward. Thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you, Addison. Thank you. I love you, Tratessa. I love you too, Mom. I can't wait to see you. So soon, I'm headed home. We're back on the road. <laughs> Alice, thank you. And Tratessa, thank you so, so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome, thank you, Anderson. Thank you. It's amazing to hear the joy in her voice, obviously. More now uh, on the bigger debate that this is now a part of and why the president has chosen to lean so heavily so early in his administration on the privilege of the office. CNN has exclusively learned that the White House has now done the paperwork needed to pardon at least 30 people. Joining us now is CNN political analyst Maggie Haberman. She is, of course, also notably a White House correspondent for The New York Times. Uh, first of all, I mean, Maggie, it's just an extraordinary thing to hear Alice mm -hmm. Uh, shortly after getting out of prison, uh, just to the, to the joy of being reunited with her family and, and yeah. the, considering her, her new life and what that must feel like for the president of the United States to have this power. The, the pardons thus far seem to fall into two categories, conservative political figures 
or people like Ms. Johnson who were flagged to the president by, by well-known people, by celebrities. Is that how you expect things to continue? Because again, CNN's reporting the White House is prepping pardons for at least 30 people. I, I, I actually think there's going to be a change in how this goes, or at least you can anticipate a change, because as we know with this president, when we think that there's a hard and fast way he's going to go ahead with something, uh, he, he takes a diversion. Uh, I do think the celebrity aspect is a big piece of this. I would not uh, diminish that. However, the component where it is people who have political connections, and also I'd create a third bucket, which is people who uh, have cases that were involved with prosecutors or investigators uh, who he wants to get back at. Uh, you know, you saw a, a case involving a Southern District prosecution uh, where he talked about doing a pardon. Martha Stewart was a person that he mused about, and that's a celebrity connection. Rob Lagojevich was on The Apprentice. Uh, I think this is one of the few powers the president has discovered that he has that is just unadulterated, essentially. It is just up to him. There are processes that are supposed to take place. Um, obviously, Ms. Johnson's case had been uh, through the process repeatedly and denied by the Obama administration. The president has decided to go around the process and do it himself, and that's going to create a whole other question about, um, you know, uh, criminal justice reform and how this goes. But I do think that he is enjoying the ability to essentially wave a wand and make this happen. I mean, it is basically for a president as close to being a king as an American president yes. can get. The president... Uh, you know, can't even declare war. Only Congress can do that. Uh, you're not surprised that he's drawn to his pardon power. And I'm wondering how much it has to do with frustration on working with Congress and, and just general frustration. I, that, is a, that is a real part of it. I mean, look, there's obviously the question of the fact that there is an open investigation um, that relates to him, that relates to his family. Um, there are people who are pleading guilty, uh, who he certainly would want to make aware that a pardon could be in the offing. And there is some sense by his supporters that that's what's happening here. I think that's an aspect of it in some cases, but I mostly think that he has been very, very stymied by the limits on executive power that he has discovered. I think that he didn't really understand the way the presidency works. He thought it would be much more like a local party boss. And I think this is something where he can just, you know, say boom, and it happens. And the fact, I mean, the president has boasted he can pardon himself, which constitutional law experts largely disagree with, say nothing of political fallout that that would bring. Um, I mean, you raised the, the point of, with some pardons, he's sending a message to others who, mm -hmm. You know, maybe facing criminal charges, or, or you know, uh, you know, thinking about flipping. Right. I, I, it's hard to ignore that aspect of it, right? And and uh, my colleagues and I at the Times had reported that his former lead lawyer, John Dowd, had had conversations with some of the people involved in the special counsel case uh, about the possibility of a of a pardon down the road. Uh, these are people who have not. Uh, pleaded guilty, there, there has not been any uh, resolution in terms of their cases, and so that was pretty notable. Um, I don't think you can avoid that or ignore that, but I really do not think that's the only thing at play here. Yeah, Maggie Haberman, appreciate it. Thanks very much. Hello, hope y'all enjoyed that much as I did. Seeing her be so happy like that when she come out and be so just crazy, but this is what I was wanting to say right here um this is from the washington post there's a, it's not just alice marie johnson over 2,000 federal prisoners are serving life sentences for non-violent drug crimes over 2,000 now on the advice of kim kardashian president trump on wednesday commuted the prison the prison term of Alice Marie Johnson, a 63-year-old great-grandmother who in 1996 was sentenced to life without parole in federal prison on nonviolent drug and money laundering charges. It's a somewhat surprising move c coming from Trump, a president who has publicly called for executing drug dealers. Oh, I remember that, actually. I remember that. I remember how he was actually talking about the death penalty for drug trafficking and all that. I remember that. I'm glad I actually come across this. Okay. But Jordan's case underscores how many nonviolent drug offenders are serving life terms in federal, federal prisons. 
It's not just federal either. It's all of them. Even state prisons, all of them. But um, I'm reading this. But Jordan's case has underscores how many nonviolent drug offenders are serving life terms in federal prison. According to federal corrections data, that <clears throat> data analyzed by the Sentencing Project, a criminal justice reform group, as of 2016, or 2016, 1,907 federal inmates were serving life sentences for drug offenses, which are, by definition, nonviolent. More than, which I'm going to show you below, an additional 103 offenders found guilty of those crimes were serving virtual life sentences, which the Sensing Project defines as sentences of 50 years or more. Under federal law, there is no possibility of parole for crimes committed after November 1st, 1987. This right here picture shows drug offenders make up nearly one-third of federal prisoners serving life sentences. And again, this goes for more than just federal. It's all over the place. It's famous. This one here shows 50, okay. Okay, I'll show this little graph, because it's, okay. See this graph right here? Look at the, the drug offenses on the orange, and the other ones, other, sorry, rape. 80, other 2,626, murder 1,320, or murder slash manslaughter, and you see that right there, that's just the graph I wanted to show you that's on here, anyway, all told, drug offenders make up about 30% of the current population of 6,720 federal prisoners serving life or virtual life sentences. Drug trafficking offenders can receive life sentences for dealing in large quantities of drugs, but in real terms, those quantities can be small. One kilogram of heroin, half a kilogram of methamphetamine mixture, or a little over a quarter a kilogram of crack cocaine. Drug offenders can also receive life sentences if they have a significant criminal history or if prosecutors can demonstrate that bodily injury or death results from the use of the drug. While buying and selling drugs on the black market is, strictly speaking, a nonviolent activity, the illicit drug trade is in, in, implicated in tens of thousands of deaths each year. Dr drug reformers point out that much of the death and destruction associated with the drug trade stems directly from the drug's illicit status. At an average annual cost per inmate of roughly 32000 it costs American taxpayers about $64 million a year to imprison the 2010 drug offenders currently serving federal life or virtual life sentences. According to a report from the U.S. Sentencing Commission, a total of 64 life sentences doled out by federal courts in 2013. More than 40% of all federal life sentences involve drug crimes as the primary offense. More than half of federal life sentences for drugs involve cocaine or crack cocaine that year. There were four life sentences for heroin and other four, and another four for marijuana. Nineteen offenders received life sentences for methamphetamine. Okay, look, I just, this don't have nothing to do with it. I don't smoke weed. I, I did a long time ago, marijuana, whatever. Um, the reason why I'm putting this in here because, okay, I want literally want y'all to comment below if you believe. That, okay, some of y'all probably get against it, some's for it, some's whatever, neutral. But you comment below, please, and tell me if you think that 
if somebody got a crime dealing with marijuana around the time that marijuana became legal to like um, there's medical but there's also recreational use when it was be when it became legal as re recreational use do you not feel that that should not that they should actually drop that if not lower their sentence but I think they should drop it because if they made it legal especially if a person serving time right now I'm sorry about the noise there's people out, kids outside playing but anyway um, I don't think it myself and I don't even smoke it but you know I still don't think it's fair for people who are currently doing a long sentence or doing time period in states that it's actually legal right now recreational use is legal you know but anyway I just want to you know I thought about that I was like you know what let me get some like a little input on that but comment below if you think that that you think it should be right for inmates to actually get out after it's been uh, considered legal in the state where they got in trouble at or where they caught their charge because from to me I think they should but I mean that's just me everybody's got their own opinion like I said before you can comment whatever as long as it's not something racial or something like that I don't care what you comment me everybody's got their own opinion uh, it's a it's worth pointing out that the number of federal inmates serving life or virtual life terms is dwarfed by the number at the state level where most criminal justice enforcement occurs. In 2016, there were 6,720 federal life offenders, but nearly 200,000 with life sentences in state prisons, according to the Sentencing Project. Presidential pardons apply only to federal crimes, making them of limited utility for addressing the nationwide problem of over-incarceration. That's definitely true on the over incarceration. If Trump were to pardon every one of the 6,720 federal inmates currently serving life or virtual life sentences, it would reduce the total population of American inmates with life sentences by 3.3%. That's what I thought I would share with y'all because that's something right there that's very, that's pretty, that's pretty interesting, you know, to come across that. And it goes, with that story too you know and just goes goes on to show you other stuff you know to do with drug but i really appreciate y'all watching and i hope y'all enjoy the video i'm sorry getting text from my boyfriend um anyway i'm very glad y'all uh i got to make this video and i'm hope y'all enjoyed everything and thank you for watching and please let me know how you like the video and thank you so much for watching Please like, share, subscribe, hit that subscribe button, please. I need some, need more people on here. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. Peace and love y'all. Bye.